All right, everybody, welcome back to another live stream this week. Today we're going to be talking about the abysmal state of technology in general. Now I'm going to make sure everything's good on my end per the usual, to make sure we're up in live streaming. Let's see what we got. Give me a moment here. And yes, we are live. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the community tab just so everybody can see it. Just a little simple message. We're live. Okay. And that should be good. All right. Now then. Uh, if you guys have questions, of course, ask them down below. We're just going to be talking. We've got Troy here. What's going on, man? And uh, again, just per the usual, sound off where you're from, your city, all that good stuff, shouting out your hometown. I'm here in sunny Florida saying hello to all you guys today. So if you guys have questions, again, leave them down so I can get to them. Now, we're going to talk about the abysmal state of technology because I've noticed something that really is kind of bothering me now, and it's that this year has been dead, like, more than usual. Like, it's been very quiet from, from like, movie perspectives, gaming perspectives, and even technology. And the technology that we're getting is like a copy and paste from last year. We're not really seeing a whole lot of gains as far as what I've seen, and it's like the most impressive technology that we have right now is really still the same thing like I was saying kind of in the last stream where it's like we get quantum dots and that's it quantum dots now with OLED which is great and all but again it still has its risks and all that so I think for me the biggest thing that I'm kind of worried about is like what is this going to look like even next year because it kind of seems like the formula is kind of set in stone right just come out with a product that's subpar, mediocre, or whatever, and nobody nobody has that thing anymore. You know that thing where you look at something and you go, that's maybe not the best, and you call it out? People call that, like, hating and, like, negative now. It's like people are so sensitive to, like, saying when something is, like, lacking, you know? And, like, I'm noticing more and more, like, the TVs that we do have right now, for example, QN90A, uh, the qn 85 or QN90B, QN85B, you have the X95J, or K, the X90K. I mean, like, a slew of the newest TVs that we have out right now are, like, blah. Even the C2, as much as I hate to say it, it's not really that great. You're better off buying the C1. And, like, I tested it, like, literally, watch the comparison, like, you'll see what I'm saying. It's like, I don't know what's happening, like, and we're supposed to be waiting for the Sony A95K, of course, after all the cherry-picked reviewers get to put out their information on it, which by that time, it's kind of like no other creator gets a chance to speak after that point because like, they get all the views on it. And then after that point, it's just kind of like it plateaus and like everybody else gets buried and they like kind of fight for like a spot to get seen. It's very weird. But it happens every year like this. And, and this is like with every product. Like, it's not just with TVs. It's also games. Like, the cherry-picked reviewers will get sent the gaming samples. They'll say what they want to say, and then that's the narrative, period. And it's just like, I get so sick of watching this in the consumer market. Like, every single time there's a product that launches, we got to get our reporters that know nothing about the product to say something good about it, market the product for us, and then everybody else. And it gets to a point where, like, there really isn't a consumer market anymore. It's just a corporation that has hired help coming out and marketing products. And then I've noticed even on Amazon when people start leaving one-star reviews, like, I'll see the, the one-star review for, like, maybe two or three months and then, like, it'll go away. And then magically a product that I know is bad and we all know is bad. We'll start getting five stars and I'm like, hmm, we're doing that now. It's it's like it's it's censorship of like the highest order really. It's it's weird. I don't know. It's tech these days, right? But I want to hear if you guys kind of are running into the same thing. Let me know down below. Uh we've got a couple people in the chat here. I'm going to set this to live chat that way I can get everybody here. Uh we've got uh, Kimar. You said uh, what's up? What's going on, man? We've got uh Rebel 47. You said almost 70,000. Congrats. Thanks, man. Yeah, and it's weird, though. Like, I'll, I'll kind of touch on, like, 70,000. It's like, uh, as far as subscribers go, I'm one of those people that has never cared about subscribers. Like, for the guys who have been watching me for a very long time, I'm the guy that would, like, openly tell people, like, just unsubscribe if you don't like X, Y, or Z. And people would be like, well, goodbye. You know, and I'd be cool with it. 
And 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 like it's weird now because like I'm I'm like almost at seventy thousand and I'm just kind of like eh, all right. But like I know, like people really like I guess on social media, like I guess you're supposed to care. I just I just want to answer questions, advance tech with actual information, and of course do what I love to do on this channel, which is just again be a nerd. <laughs> what else is there, right? I don't know, but I do appreciate when I see guys that have been here for a while. I think for me, that's the thing as a creator I care about more than like the subscriber count is like people who I know have been here, right? Like Troy, Anonymous, Enoch, Daniel. Uh, freaking uh, Pika Beats, like people who like I keep seeing these people through the years, like rocking with me, and it's like, damn, like you've been here a minute, kind of thing, you know. And I don't know that that for me is like, it, as weird as it sounds, more important than like the subscriber count thing. So, yeah, I do appreciate you uh, pointing that out, but uh, yeah, just conversation where it exists, right? Uh, Team New York in the house. What's going on, Kimar? We've got uh, Troy, he said, uh, here from H-Town. Joshua said, what up, Q? Big fan, of, uh, big fan of your show. I thank you for that, Josh. I appreciate that. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Joshua from Nashville, what's up? Representing. Uh, we've got uh, Remtex. I, I, I hope I said that right. Ram, Ramtex? I, I'm probably messing up your name. I apologize for that. Uh, Lake Wales, Florida. How is it over there? I don't really hear much about like Lake Wales. It's like one of those areas that's just like I know it exists, but like it's kind of quiet. There's not a lot of news about it. Like no I've like met almost no one from Lake Wales. So, yeah, just let me know how that part of Florida is like. Uh hello from New Jersey. Uh Kimar says uh love the organic growth bro, uh, the organic growth bro. Keep it up. Thanks, man. Yeah, I uh I don't know, man. It's one of those things like I always get accused of buying subscribers, like, in my slow seasons, like, now, like, it's summer, there, there's, like, nothing happening right now, right, our, our big hype seasons are, like, winter towards Black Friday when they, uh, or, like, late summer when they start pushing out more TVs and we have a lot more to talk about and a lot more to review, you know, and, and, and it's always, like, you know, you have trolls that'll come out and they'll be like, oh, ah, look, the views are falling off, I'm like, dude, look at everybody right now, everybody is suffering, so, yeah, I think that's a part of organic growth, too, and I, and I like that part of about this channel, as weird as it sounds like, because the slow moments let me kind of do what I'm doing now, how, like, I'm, like, taking classes, and I'm, like, learning up on, like, more, like, the composition of film and the composition of, like, cinematography, the whole art of that. Like, it's so much to go through. I spent, like, all day doing that. Pain in the ass, really, but it's going to be rewarding. I'm having some plans fo set forward for the future uploads that you guys will see. Production's probably going to be noticeably different, but I hope you guys will like the direction it goes in. So feedback will always be the number one thing I use is always to push this stuff forward or whatever. But yeah, a big part of that organic growth are people like you, Kimar, who have became members and stay on the channel. So I do want to thank you and shout out to everybody right now who has been rocking with Quantum TV from like day one. You guys are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing and I'll keep making it worth your while. All right. Uh, shout out to Devante Swing. Thank you, brother, for your donation of five bucks. It really helps the channel out a ton. So hats off to you, my brother. Um, you said, uh, thanks for the great reviews and keep up the great work and absolutely will do. I appreciate, uh, appreciate all the help and support. I mean, I think you're like one of the people that have been here like just about the longest, like you've been here a very long time. Um, I think there's only like one other person. I think that was like my very first subscriber on this channel. I think I was like, uh, Kendall Jackson. That was like my very first subscriber here. And so it's really cool to see, like, your name pop up, too, because you're one of those people as well that have been here for a while, so that's cool. Uh, we've got uh, Pick Millie. What's going on, man? You said, my guy. What's going on? You said, uh, how's it going? You said, my veggie-eating jarhead have <laughs> been enjoying my C1 thanks to you. Yeah, I, I denounced a jarhead. I do. I denounce it. I am not proud of it. I am not. For, for I don't know if you remember, but like there was a good portion of time I couldn't even show up on camera because I kept getting sick because of the injury. That yeah, I just I'm, I don't know. People like it, it pisses people off like in that inner circle sometimes. Like the veterans and everything that find out that like I am one of those people that like want nothing to do with like like because I, I get people that find out they're like oh you were in the military like yes they go thank you for your service I'm like don't thank me for it it's nothing to thank me for 
at all. I'm not happy about it. It's like I got hurt. I now have permanent damage. It's a soft spot. You know, it's like bringing up PTSD, I'd imagine, for some people. But, like, for me, it's just, like, remind a reminder of, like, I was once a young-ass kid that didn't know a finesse when I heard it. Because I tell you, man, they finesse you real good. You know, you, they, make, they really make you believe, like, you're out here just, like, they're just giving everybody, like, free, like, school and, like, benefits. And it's just all for free. You'll never go to war. Oh, not at all. The rarity of that. Like, oh, my God can't believe i ever fell for that what got me enlisted was the damn travel they were like oh you could travel i was like oh that sounds fun you know but c'est la vie <laughs> here i am some fucking 11 years later regretting the shit out of that like oh my god but not to go on a tangent there but yes the veggies are still good eating all that and uh yeah man just hanging out. I appreciate you stopping by, and I'm so glad that you are enjoying your C1. I'm still actually working on, like, I'm doing, like, an overhaul, by the way, for all my members who are watching right now. I'm doing an overhaul right now of pretty much everything that I've got on settings. So I know I've been a little quiet on the VIP tab. I'm, like, going in, re re retesting, first of all, because I know color shifts happen from time to time, analyzing, taking feedback, Trying to figure out, because I, I get a lot of requests for, like, game modes and HDR modes and then, like, regular viewing modes for multiple types of day and uh, night viewing situations. It's just, it's a lot. So I try to take a lot of that and figure out, like, what the first batch of settings that I'm going to re -up -do, or like redo. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, but even now for the Samsung S95B, I just did the firmware update for it because I've been getting a lot of requests to review the firmware. And so far, so good. No problems, but I will report on what I see, which, yeah, there's, there's something different about it. And uh, that'll be the next video that we do after this one. But either way, it's something for next time. Uh, I just finally seen this, so I apologize. Shout out to Kimar. Thank you for your donation of $19.99. You said just showing support. And I really super appreciate that, man. Like, the fact that, like, you, you, you're... You're as long with the channel as you have been and you still show up and you show the love. I super appreciate that. That's really cool of you to do that. So seriously, thank you. Uh, and then we've also got uh, questions coming in from, I think I missed this one. Uh, JP, you said, uh, JP said here from Cali. We've got uh, Kimar, you said, oh, by the way, I love the HTA 7000. It's wonderful. It is. Yeah, bro, like... I know this is not the best way to obviously test a product, but I was in Best Buy. That's kind of how it works, right? We want to see a product, we're going to go to Best Buy. So I'm in Best Buy, and I'm like listening to the demo that they put out there, and I'm like, this is really good. Like, this shit is really good. It's very clear. The audio succinct. It actually blew my, uh, uh, what is it, the Z9F soundbar, in my opinion, out of the water as far as, like, what I was hearing out of it. So I was happy with that. That was great. An upgrade is an upgrade. But it's too big, though. That was my big thing. Like, it's huge. And I'm like, I don't really know where I'm going to put this damn thing. So, you know, ended up buying a second Z9F because, like, it, you know, it's too big. It's just this is way too big. It's a beast, but it's too big, at least for me. Uh, we've got uh, Pretty Quiet here. Kimar says, uh, thanks for giving your honest opinion on it anytime. We've got Troy. You said, uh, what's the next review? Uh, TV settings revisions that you're working on. So right now I'm going to be looking towards the Samsung S95B settings. I'm going to be updating. I think I'm going to be working on the filmmaker mode first and foremost, and then going from there. Um, again, just probably trying to revamp and do like a bunch of the other stuff. And if you've got something specific, any of you guys, members, let me know. It's like say, hey, by the way, uh, I'm trying to see this very specific thing. Let me know, and I'll try to work on some settings for a particular television, and that way you'll be able to benefit from you know an, an upgrade of some sort, right? And also, I am working on U8G stuff. For all of you guys who are wondering, I'm putting the finishing touches up on those settings, and so far, so good. I'm liking the results, but it's hard because like it's it's like every time I make these settings, it's like reinventing the wheel. It's like you put it in, you do the reference accurate calibration, bam, that's done. Okay. Now from there, you have to figure out how do you go from this boring, lackluster image and take it even further beyond. But then if you've already done that, 
how do you go even further than that to give a tangible upgrade each time? That's where the challenge comes in. But I kind of like like a mad scientist, have fun with it and experiment with a bunch of stuff. As you guys probably already know, the creativity is through the roof with this kind of stuff. But yeah, so far the UHG is coming along. But there, I will warn you guys on the UHG side of things, they're leaning more towards dark room scenario because I've been doing a lot of dark room viewing lately, hanging out, chilling, just vibing with the family. So that's definitely something that uh, I think you guys could appreciate as the lights need to go down. You don't always want all 1,500, 1,600 of those nits at all times, so that's just what I'll say there. Um, we've got uh, Handy Cart. What's going on, man? You said, uh, damn, the fact that you remember the name, uh, remember remember the name, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember pretty much everybody's name that like has been here for a while. It's, it's like, I'm not, bro, like, I am really like not like other creators. When I first started doing YouTube, I kind of came on like as like, even now, like I know technical things, but I am still just a person. I am not special. I am not better than anybody else because I know these things. Then I always challenge people who have almost like this God complex where they feel like because they are a professional, they, they start talking down or condescending to people or they'll ignore their comment section entirely, even though the only reason they're successful YouTubers is because people believe in them and they ask them for help and they go completely ignored. I mean, and, and for me, like watching that time after time again on like every channel is just like the worst. And I'm like, OK, whatever. I, I don't have patience for it. And so I eventually just decided to be different. I just because that's just me. I'm an open book when it comes to stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean. I think through the years, it's really cool, again, just seeing repeat names coming back over and over again. Like, that for me is like, that's when you know you're doing something right. You know what I mean? Like, when you have people who have been with you since, like, 2017, 2018, 2016, and, and like, the years that they've just been with you. And, and it's, 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 it's a humbling experience because it's like, you know, you don't always get to, you don't always get to express that. And it's weird because it's like, you guys watching me and it's like, I'm just a guy on camera talking to you, right? And it's like something that's very impersonal, very casual right now. But it's hard because it's like, I try to like answer as many questions and stuff as I can as well in the comments, but like that doesn't always work out as I'm sure some of you guys already know. So it's one of those things where it's like, I, I love these types of like uh, forums, open door kind of events where we can just talk and just kind of be people and say, hey, what's up? How you doing? You know? Oh shit, there's my buddy. I've known you for like three years. You've been on the channel forever. Like, it's really cool. Like, I really do like that kind of thing. So, yeah. Uh, we've got Chris, uh, Christian Witt. I hope I said your name right. Uh, you said checking in from Los Angeles. What's going on, man? Appreciate that. Yeah, I love when you guys let me know where you guys are from. Like, that's always the most fun part of these live streams. Uh, we've got. Uh, uh, Peakman, what's going on? You said, uh, I know, but we had convo about it, man. And you said, I'm a veteran too. Yes, man. I feel you. LOL. Yeah, I know. I, I talked to all you guys about it. Like, especially like on the VIP tab, discord. I mean, you guys, you get, you know, the deal, bro. I'm like, I'm like one of those guys though. I, I, I like when, how do I put this? When I have something that has been the direct result of something negative, I can never, like, associate it, like, as a positive thing. Like, like literally, bro, like, literally, one of the things I did to, like, distance myself from it entirely was, like, like, because when I got out, I was, I was, <laughs> I was one of those guys, like, I would just wear my utilities around the house. My wife would be like, fucking stop, stop, bro. I would stand at attention. There's nothing happening. I would just be at attention. I was the weirdest fucking guy when I got out. I was, like, not even a normal person. So, like, it, it took a while of, like, self-reflecting through the eyes of my relatives to be like, yeah, I guess I'm not really all there with this. So, I don't know, man. It's one of those things. Uh, but, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. As far as, like, veterans go and things like that, I don't want to uh, make you feel like, you know, I'm crapping on you because I had a bad experience. I'm, I've met a lot of people that have great experiences. MPs, they are a lot of fun to talk to. They'll tell you some crazy stories. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Enoch, what's going on, brother? I'm telling you, bro, it still gets me every time because I see that, like, 24-month badge right next to your name. That That is, like, wild for me. What's going on, man? You said, what's good, Quantum? And members, hopefully everyone is enjoying Friday. I got you, Quantum. Thanks, bro. I appreciate you, man. 
Uh, we've got, uh, uh, they tell you to travel to the beach with no water. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, man, it's ridiculous. Uh, we've got, uh, Kimar, you said, uh, hey Q, I did the same thing, uh, LOL, paired it with the, uh, paired it with my 77 inch G2. <clears throat> I forgot what I was talking about in that one, I'm not even gonna cap here, so I, like, I completely forgot, because I, sometimes when I do these live streams, I talk a lot, and I lose track of what I said before, earlier in the live stream, and then someone will address it, and, like, I take a while to answer the chat, and then I'll be like, ah, that's what you mean. So, if I... Don't answer exactly the question. Don't hate me. Um, I'm going to mess this up. Gorilla Grip. <laughs> bro, bro, that name, though, it gets me every time. Gorilla Grip 01. Oh, man, that's funny. Uh, what's going on, man? And uh, you said, uh, hey, uh, you said, hey, for LGC1 game optimizer settings, <clears throat> would you change anything now that VRR is unlocked? <clears throat> I'll be very honest with you. I don't use VRR. I'm one of, I think I'm probably pr if the only gamer right now that is firmly against using game modes and VRR outside of like competition type stuff. I just can't see myself with the way that I play sacrificing picture quality and the, the options like motion presets and things like that. That means more to me in a story game like Horizon Forbidden West, for example, or like Mario Kart's when I get the new DLC tracks. I hate game mode because it always has that crappy judder. What I really wish, and I wish like TVs gave you the option to choose. So we know like by default we have, you know, 120 hertz that the panel can go up to. But I really wish they gave you an option to go in and choose per what you're doing in the menu. I don't know why a TV manufacturer hasn't figured this out yet. There should be a way to force manually 24 hertz all the time, 60 hertz all the time, and 120 hertz all the time. But the fact that they haven't done that yet, it's just like another missed opportunity. Now, who knows? Maybe some like television exec or marketing agent could be watching and just having fun chilling and be like, hmm, maybe, <laughs> you know, I don't know. But that, that, that's the kind of stuff that like when I say like, because I've been talking about this for a while, but like even the, the title of this live stream is like the abysmal state of tech. Where is the passion for technology? You guys notice that like over the years, things just get cheaply made. We lose features and nobody bats an eye. And then it's just kind of like we're sitting here with this like nerfed tech all the time. And for me, it sucks because like I come from like, you know, one model and I'm so used to everything being one way. And then I'm like, OK, surely the newer model will have that feature and more. And then they rip something out. So I think for me, that was one of the things that really kills it. But as far as like where I stand and what would I change as far as settings, probably nothing, honestly. Game mode settings will still be dedicated game mode settings. So we'll do all the fun stuff, making sure that it's as buttoned up as possible while giving that responsiveness for the input lag. Um, I, I, I don't touch VRR very often, though. I, I, if I'm being honest with you, I don't see a point on this current generation because everything is either 30 FPS, like, most of the games or 60 fps that's it like that 120 hertz stuff at 4k is just not really happening and unless they're going to start implementing some form of like dls s deep learning super sampling um it, it really isn't viable and i'm not going to play with potato resolution so i don't know that's just a me thing so yeah that's how i'd probably go about it i wouldn't really change much <clears throat> Uh, we've got, uh, Cannon Hawk, what's going on? You said, uh, hey, Q, uh, hey Q, almost on time. You said, hey, Q Force Peeps, what's going on? Shout out to Cannon. Ernie, what's going on? You said, uh, what's your, uh, I'm sorry, you said, uh, Quantum, what's your on WWE 2K this year? I don't, I don't know what you mean. Ah, gotcha. I see it at the bottom. You corrected it. Uh, what's your take on WWE 2K this year? I think it's a lot of fun. I'm disappointed in some aspects, though. <coughs> One of the things that really bugged me this year is that from, like, a mechanic aspect, they this is kind of like what I mean. Again, kind of going back to the abysmal state of technology, now we're going over into the gaming aspect. WWE 2K20, for example, and 2K19 even, <coughs> had physics where you can grab your opponent, walk them over to the steel steps, slam their head on it, and you're good to go, right? 
You can throw them into it. You can throw them into the steel steps while facing the steel steps. That was cool. And, like, this year, it's neutered. And you can't even break barricades. And so I find myself being frustrated by those aspects, but then immediately forgiving it when I see the massive overhaul to the backstage area. There is nothing more satisfying, right, <clears throat> than coming uh, from the arena and going backstage climbing up three stories and tossing your opponent down to what should be their death, only to pick them up and continue to beat them within an inch of their life. I mean, it is a lot of fun. It is, it is exhilarating. I can't lie. Just to drag him back into the ring. Meanwhile, I love, I love doing like the custom matches where it's like the best two out of three falls, and then there you go. You're having fun. You're just tearing up the arena. Pick up a shovel, do some cartoonish shit, like hit him in the head with it. It's, it's a lot of fun, the game. It is. And the stop sign... While finicky is a nice addition, and the graphics, the presentation style with the entrances this year, yeah, I'm all about it. And then, of course, arena creation. Now, many of you guys watching this channel and all this stuff, you guys don't know, I'm actually one of the best arena creators in WWE 2K anything, because that's what I do. I love to make these arenas and just give them out to people, take requests and put arenas out. You know, I like... The uh, what is it, the Ruthless Aggression Era, and I make arenas about that. But I got this stupid name. It's like Mr. Are You Champion. I can't change it. I don't know why it calls me that. It's supposed to be Chemical XJ9, but instead it's something so not what I wanted. So, yeah, it's lame. But it is nice to know that I'm on the first page, though. <laughs> that's cool. But outside of that, I mean, that, that's my that, those are my thoughts. It's a fun game. You just got to kind of scale those expectations a little bit. We're still not at the point where, like, for me personally... I want a WWE game where the broadcasting style allows you to have, like, camera crew, right, by the ringside. And you can, like, come, go up to them or, like, throw them in the things and, like, take their camera from them and they run away or something like that into the backstage. That'd be cool, right? I don't know. Or they move out of your way like little NPCs that don't really do much but just walk away from you like the referee. We can have a referee. We can have NPC cameramen. But I don't know. That's just me. I want more of the production aspect of it, but... What, what can I say? We're never going to get what we want. It's a cash grab franchise. But yeah, that long-winded uh, explanation out of the way. We're going to go on and talk about some more stuff here. Uh, we've got uh, Kevin. What's going on, man? Kev from the UK. Shout out to Kev. You said uh, you set me straight on the, uh, on the A90G settings. And you said thank you. I appreciate that, man. <clears throat> I'm glad that I was able to help you out with the A9G or A90G. I think I think it's uh, it's 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 the A9G here. I think I don't know. It, too many models, too many numbers, too many names, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you're happy nonetheless. Um, we've got uh, Handy Cart. You said uh, I use Vivid Mode on VRR uh, on my U8G, but also uh, also main also main and FPS. Yeah, so that that would that would do it. Uh, we've got uh, Sam. You said. Uh, Got got to be COVID for causing this company's just rehashing. I'm going to be very honest with you. <clears throat> that line is getting very old very fast. This COVID thing everybody's talking about, like that's the reason that they can't do their job. They can't show up to work. They're afraid to talk to people. They're afraid to go to Christmas. How is all I say. I don't get it. It's like we 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 have everything you could possibly need. If you want a vaccine, you can get one. If you don't, you don't have to kind of thing. Okay? And it's to the point now where it's like the world more or less, I don't know, I I really honestly don't know. Like don't take this as like me being a dick. I genuinely don't know cuz I only live in one state, right? I don't know what the rest of the states are like, but here in Florida, we're back to normal. Like the concept of COVID doesn't exist here for the most part. Nobody wears masks unless they really want to or they're really afraid. And the rest of us just go about our business and we do our, you know, we do our due diligence. Nobody really says anything, right? <clears throat> Nobody's like, oh, you can't come into this business if you, oh, like that, that mostly died down outside of medical. Like it still happens in the medical fields, like when you go see your doctor for a checkup or whatever, but when you go to the grocery store, when you go to GameStop, when you're going out to the bar, whatever, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So I, I, I guess from my perspective, I have a general ignorance to it, how companies like major corporations who like literally at some point, I'm pretty sure 
tried to force their entire workforce to get vaccinated, if not successfully pulled that off uh, to some degree, right, through rules and regulations. I, I think personally that it's one of those things where it's like, how can you not get back to work? Like we see products not being made properly, being made sloppily. And when, when products fail, when movies fail, when games fail, when they ship with glitches and bugs, they blame COVID for everything. And I'm like, you know, here we are. It's 2022. We are halfway through 2022 right now, people. Something's got to give. Like that, that excuse has got to just stop being that and start being maybe you didn't try your hardest, you know? And that's like kind of where I sit with it. I'm like, is it COVID or is it you? Because at this point, seems like you. Now, I again, I can't speak for other states. Maybe they are really burdened and everything is super locked down still and nobody can go anywhere. But I have not heard of that. If your state's still locked down, let me know. Genuinely, I'm curious. I don't know outside of Florida what what the world is like, you know? I really don't. So just let me know. But yeah, no, that's not a thing here. <clears throat> so yeah, I, don't, I couldn't tell you though, especially coming like from like major corporations and things like that, like Sony, Samsung, LG, all that. Like, I don't know. I feel like, for example, like LG with the C2, there's no good reason why the motion should have been worse than the C1. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. The Sony A95K, it hasn't even launched yet. I called this from the jump. People are going to complain when I review it, when I get it hands-on. I know people are going to be very annoyed that I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it early, okay? It's too thick for an OLED. Like, it's the thickest OLED I think I've ever seen made. And nobody seems to want to talk about that. And the stand is really awkward to the point where it almost looks like it leans at an angle like the A1E did back in, like, 2017, Nobody wants to talk about that either. So these are things I'm going to have to really sit down with and see how big of a problem it is. And I'm also concerned with the weight of the extra thickness. You know, people try to say the extra heat sink, but like the A90J has a heat sink and it's not that big. So I don't know, things I'm going to have to investigate and look at and see for myself. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just not impressed with technology as of late. Like, dude, it's just <clears throat> like even this phone in my hand right now, this I don't know if it'll focus on this. This is the uh, Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. I guess some people like it a lot. I am just meh about it. I don't see, like, the Eon upgrade outside of, like, photos. Photos are good. Video is meh, right? Day-to-day -day operation, also meh. It's it's weird. It's, it's I don't know. When it comes to technology, I, I, I guess I have high expectations because, like, they tr they really – they spare no expense with trying to sell you, right? They're like, this is the new ultra mega elite plus uh, – you know, all, all that stuff they like. Plus elite pro max uh, – what, 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 what other ridiculous synonyms for awesome they like to use with these words that they play on all these products? But that's – that's kind of what I see with this. So, yeah, <clears throat> that's what I'll say there. Uh, moving on to more questions. We've got uh, uh, my earlier comment was about you going to Best Buy testing out the... Yeah, okay, you did the same thing. Okay, cool. I'm glad to know I'm not the only one that goes to Best Buy to hear audio. You know, some of these guys, like, really give you a hard time. They're like, <laughs> you bought a product because you listened to it at Best Buy? Aren't you supposed to know? I love how like this concept, like I'm a television reviewer, but because I'm a television reviewer, I'm magically supposed to be this guru of all things worldly tech. It just doesn't happen that way. I'm a guy that loves it. I'm a guy that has technical aspects, but I'm not going to know everything kind of thing. And when I go in there and I'm listening in a Best Buy and I'll tell some people, and I'll be like, hey, yo, I, I heard it at Best Buy. This is really good. And it some people have conspiracy theories. They'll say like, "Oh no, I don't. I wouldn't trust. I wouldn't trust uh, hearing it in Best Buy. You got to buy it and take it home because the store demo is designed to make you hear things that aren't there." I'm like, maybe the TV demos. I can see that post production editing to juice up colors, all that sound design. I'm not really seeing that. Like the TV, uh, or rather the speakers, are either capable of that awesome sound or they're not, kind of thing, and. Yeah, that's kind of what I run into a lot. But no, I'm glad I'm not alone with doing that there. Uh, now, you also said uh, you paired it with the G2, and it is amazing. That's good to hear. 
Uh, Quantum, do you still have uh, the old, uh, the video of your old channel from 2017 comparing uh, one famous comparison, the the 900E versus the B7 uh, by you bashing the LG with their ABL, which was classic? I probably do. A lot of the older stuff that I have, like, I do this a lot. If it's maybe a couple years older, I tend to delete it because I don't like my old work. I'm one of those people that cringe when I watch old things back. Either it's lighting cameras at the time, my methodology at the time, my impression of just watching myself. I'll like see how I perceive myself. I'm my biggest critic, so if I don't like it, I delete it on the spot. You know, and, and it's funny because like then you'll you'll have like people that'll come up and they'll be like, ah, you deleted it because you were wrong. It's like, no, I deleted it because I didn't fucking like it. Like, I, I don't like watching my old work. I hate old work. Um, it, it, even, like, my wife will <laughs> my wife will say this sometimes, like, even on the channel, like, you guys don't know it because you'll see the final product the video go up. Sometimes I make the same video, like, 20 fucking times, dude. Like, I'm not even joking. I'll sit there and just redo it and redo it and redo it because I don't like it. I'm like, ah, the lighting is off or this is off or I don't really like that. I, I don't know. I go through a lot of takes a lot. I, don't, I think it's normal for creators to do that, but <clears throat> a part of that is also when I feel I've grown enough as a creator, then I'll get rid of certain work, and I'll be like, eh, I'll get rid of it. And one of the reasons I got rid of, I didn't really get rid of it, I still have it, I private a lot, I like doing that, because it's a way of holding on to it, because I, I, I recorded it, I made it, I don't want to delete it, but I don't want it publicly available anymore, so I'll just private it, that's like a big thing that I do. Um, so I, I, I end up doing that because it's just kind of like, it's amateur work, in my opinion, from what I do now and like how I approach things now. Cause you gotta understand like this whole like AV industry really, as far as like the YouTube scene didn't really get big until like, I would say 2012 and like our things was like the first to really step on the scene as like an AV option. Like they were the first really serious, like AV channel. And then from there, then you had other channels pop up, like the HDTV tests. Digital Trends is not really a channel, in my opinion. They're more of a commercial conglomerate that covers anything technology. Corporations pay them. They'll say something nice. That doesn't count to me. But, like, actual technical channels, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a niche thing, right? And so for me, watching, and I, and I look at all the work, and I look at, like, the craft, right, of, like, making AV content that's engaging and fun and trying to answer questions and educational and trying not to... And my big thing, like, I hate, hate when I watch videos in my niche, outside my niche, doesn't matter, on YouTube, and it's overly technical because it's like, you, you know, I'm bored out of my mind listening to people talk about stuff that, A, you have to be a part of that community and know a whole lot about it, and it's not easily digestible for everybody, I don't like my videos to be like that, so I even have to catch myself, and if I feel like I'll say certain things, and, uh, you know, it, it's weird. It's like you have to strike the balance between casual, professional, eh. I'm, I'm more somewhere in the middle. I'll be professional if I have to, but not always more casual kind of guy that'll give you some technical stuff that'll help you out. If it helps you, enriches your life, there you go. You can buy one of the best TVs you've ever seen in your life, and you know for a fact if I recommend something because I'm so hard on everything – it's the best damn thing you're going to see. And that's, I think that's where I kind of like go in and delete a lot of stuff and remove ug ugly videos in my opinion. Like, especially like, cause back then I was shooting on the a 6,000 and man, let me tell you that thing crushes black levels, like nobody's business. So I'm like watching my comparisons, for example, like the B7, like you were mentioning with an 900 E and I'm like, yeah, but I mean, I can't see any of the details and the cameras oversaturating a lot of stuff, making everything look overly juiced. You know, and it's funny because I'll always hear this. I'll always hear this from like, you know, back then I used to like, you guys don't know it now because now I've got the C1 and I review the C2 and, you know, th those those two OLEDs have kind of changed my mind about OLED more or less. But I'm talking C10 all the way down through history. I was like labeled the number one OLED hater because OLED was not where it needed to be magically now that it is obviously i tell you that and people want to forget that part but you know it's just they weren't accepting it so they hated me and they were like oh of course you hate oled all your colors are oversaturated bro i still get that comment today on like everything like it doesn't matter what and they're like oh this 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 is oversaturated i'm like you do realize not to be a dick 
that you are watching a recording of a television. You are not actually seeing the television. So I can't always show you my camera. And if you need proof, anyone can do this test, by the way. Anytime you think you're seeing something, you probably aren't, right? Take your cell phone. It's the camera that everybody has, right? And just record your TV. And you will see it looks so oversaturated, so cartoony, so ugly from what you're seeing with your real eye that it's not gonna, it's not gonna do you any justice. And it's not unless you get like a super mondo expensive camera like the one I'm recording this live stream with that you'll be able to do anything of value. So yeah, it gets hard because you don't always want to break out the big bulky camera and set everything up. And it's like sometimes you just want to put something out because you're excited about it. And I think that for me is that's hard because even now, like I unbox a TV and I'm like, oh, look at this. This is so cool. Like, and I'll want to talk to you guys about settings that I made or whatever. Meanwhile, I'll have some jack off come up into the comment section and be like, oh, <laughs> look at Quantum. <laughs> He's got oversaturated. So he's like, you idiot. It's a camera. I was excited. I wanted to share with my fans. Can you fuck off, please? Uh, the biggest one that does that, you, you guys already know, no need to give him any more attention because seriously, he's not important. But I will say you guys already know who trolls the most in this community. But the point being is not to give them a platform or talk about them. It's more or less to talk about the simple fact that like when you do creations and you make YouTube videos, it's hard because like I can't show you everything. But like I'm working on getting something down. I tell you what. And hopefully with the way the production is going now or at least where I've elevated it to, hopefully you'll be able to see a lot more of, like, real-world representations. So, fingers crossed for that. <clears throat> uh, we've got uh, Anonymous. What's going on, brother? You said, uh, honestly anticipating high since TCL now, the UHG with, uh, with an evergreen. You said, love to see if they can improve and build off of... All right, we should be back. Technical difficulties, you gotta love them. Aren't they great? I'm actually surprised it held the stream though, so that was really good. Um, but yeah, it's very weird how the 
live stream just decided it was going to die out. And I appreciate you guys. I got I got anonymous text to me though. No audio, god. What happened? Audio. Can you guys hear me all right? It should be audio. I don't know. I'll try to see if I can fix that. Let's see. Switching to secondary phones. Okay. Uh, I got a text from Anonymous. You said uh, audio is good now. Okay. Thank you, bro. I, I got to do all this live. I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm, I'm like operating like two phones. It's 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 crazy. You're good now. Thank you. Thank you, Handycart. I also see you were helping out too, man. Both of you guys hooking me up, letting me know. I never know when they go down like that. All right. So that's the other thing. Doing YouTube... You have two phones. So I always have to figure out wh where it went down at and what, oh, where it goes and how it goes. It's all over everywhere. All right. Let's get back to work here. All right. I'll try to see if I can open and back up the live chat. Uh, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, back now. Good. Okay. <coughs> of course, uh, as soon as he gets... Uh, as soon as he gets to Hisense, uh, just getting to Hisense, or just getting to Hisense Handy. Uh, I, I see you're talking to Handycart. Uh, streams Black, that's when it went out. What questions did I miss? I feel like I missed questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, Digital Trends recommends someone buys uh, Amazon Fire TV, <laughs> bruh. FYI, don't buy that TV. Yeah, now, I'm going to say something, okay? This, I, I I don't know if there's a way I can say it without coming off like an asshole. I apologize if I, I can't, okay? Don't buy TVs that are like $200, $300. Those are not good TVs. They, they, they don't give you the art of a television. And, and, and what I mean that, I mean like, you don't have to be rich. You don't need to buy a two thousand dollar TV, a fifteen hundred, one thousand dollar TV, even eight hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars. You can buy five hundred dollars worth of a TV, okay, and still walk away a winner. It's about making smart purchases versus like that that like impulse buy, right? Like, mmm, three hundred bucks. That sure is cheap. I like it. Go for it. Now again, you watch TV once in a blue moon. Go ahead, do you? But like. Most people watching this channel, we don't do that. Like, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, I say it all the time. Your best bet for like the best budget TV is the TCL S546. There is nobody beating that right now, and I can't wait to see what the replacement does. And if it sucks, I'll be telling you it sucks, but I hope not. And the six series this year, I'm also excited to see what they do with that. They always get close every year to like a really great TV with the 6 Series, but fail because they crush the black levels out. So hopefully they can stop doing that. But I'm, I'm really excited for it either way. Okay, so uh, late to the party. What's going on, Craig? Uh, we've got uh, the Christian Conservative. What's going on, brother? You said, uh, in your opinion, how important is it to leave the best of, uh, the best of TV if we can get close uh, to the best of TV with another with using your settings? Damn, that's a really creative and good question. So I would say you don't necessarily have to buy the most expensive TV. I think it really depends, okay? So like you're a member, paid five bucks, you have my settings, and you have a supported model, something I'm working on or have worked on. I think you can get away with TVs like the TCL S546 easily because I've compared those to... TVs that people say is unfair to compare it to, but when I do that, I find like it's holding its own with a Hisense UHG that costs substantially more money. I find it's holding its own and destroying TVs like the Sony X90K that's hazy gray black and does not look good, and colors, quite frankly, were so bad. Like, dude, the, the, the 90 series this year, 90K, 95K from Sony were so bad, I said, fuck it. I, I never do that unless the TV is so bad I don't believe it has potential enough to be worthy of my stamp of approval. Like, if it's bad, I'll just straight up be like, all right, we're done with this review, next TV. It's garbage. I'm not going to waste your time making settings and all that other stuff. So, you know, I think you'll be good with real TVs like the TCL S546, uh, the Hisense U7G, the U8G. Of course, if you have a little bit more money, the C1, um, then you have ultra expensive TVs, but really good ones. S95B, you know, those are good. 
you can get away with the A80K. It's not the best, but it's better than the A90J. Don't do that. I mean, if you wanted to. Um, I, I mean, it's it's one of those things, like, with recommended TV. And then, of course, I always get, like, for the really small sizes, that's where I have the most difficulty because we see this trend now where it's like, unless you buy an OLED, every TV manufacturer is, like, crapping on, like, really tiny TVs. Like, I remember even growing up, it would not be uncommon to find a 24-inch TV. It was super easy. 19-inch TV. Very easy to find. And... It would be midway decent for the time in line with the specifications for that time period. Now, they purposely make them 1080p or, like, worse. Like, they, they really don't put their best foot forward. So it's so hard because it's like I want to tell you guys, like, you know, when when buying the best of a TV, right, like the best TV, I, I don't I personally don't believe a TV is worth more, period, than, like, $3,000. I think if you're buying a TV that's worth more than $3,000, then you're kind of wasting your time, you know? And I think that kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of the other stuff that we say here on the channel a lot about just being smart and not wasting your money too much. So hopefully that helps you guys out. So what I'll do, I'll try to rattle off some of the last uh, of the questions here. <coughs> and then uh, we're going to wrap up the stream. Uh, let's see. We've got, uh, hey Q, when is the new, when's the new Hisense 50 inch? I know they're coming out sometime in summer. That's all I know, though. Um, apparently, according to Earth Human, uh, Roku TCL 6 Series is apparently pretty awesome. I hate Roku. I I wish Roku never existed, personally. I just, I don't like it. As a me thing, it's an opinion. I have to say that, like, nowadays. God, it's so crappy how everybody is these days sometimes. Not you guys watching, but, like, people in general. You can't even have opinions anymore. <laughs> Fuck. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but, no, I, I really don't like Roku. I, mm, I I like when they had the Google TV, personally. I thought that was a really good step for them to go because then you have everything integrated from the Play Store to your Android phone. It's, like, brilliant. Like, I love it. Well, it's now, like, Google TV, not the Play Store anymore. But, yeah, still. Uh, we got... Uh, <clears throat> we got uh, Y'all Too Much... And then we've got, I love hearing from the OGs. I love hearing from all you guys, man. It's always fun. Um, but all right, guys, I'm pretty much going to wrap it up. I still got more work that I have to do. I'm sidelining it. I'm stalling, you know, that kind of thing. I'm being a bad guy right now. Um, but if you guys have questions, of course, keep it locked. Bring your questions every week, Friday, 7 p.m. through 8 p.m. I'm going to be limiting the amount of interaction that I put out into the comment section at this point, there's no real point in answering comments from the comment section as much as I love to do that because, again, you guys know what's happening right now. You have a bunch of little trolls that all they do is they want to spam a bunch of comments over and over again. I'm not about to read all that, and unfortunately, the only way to get to you guys is to dig through your comment. So right now, the only people I'll be able to filter comments out for are the members, so you guys should be fine. I should still be able to answer you guys, but like regular comments, they're all kind of just regular comments. I can't filter by like how many months somebody has been subscribed yet or something like that. They don't give us that option. If they do, that'd be great because then I can just toss away all the trolls that aren't even subscribed. I can just go only subscribers, and then that's it. That would be wonderful. Maybe food for thought for Google to add that because these trolls, man, I tell you, they're really annoying. But, hey, let them cry over spilled milk and we're just going to keep doing what we do, right? So I'll keep working on those settings as you guys uh, have been asking about. Uh, I, I think the C1, uh, I think the one thing that you guys were asking about with the C1, I don't remember if it was game mode settings specifically or it was like HDR game mode settings. I really can't remember. But, again, I'm just going back and I'm trying to find uh, – happy medium for a bunch of different things so we're going to be putting out a bunch of different settings regardless um just going crazy with it and hopefully you guys like what happens next um so in the next video i'll be reviewing the firmware for the samsung s95b if you have questions based off that tv if you own it that kind of thing perfect come out on the live stream again just kind of if you're a member i can answer your question but you guys get what i'm saying so hopefully that doesn't disappoint too many people i'm kind of wrapping this up and uh, i want to thank you guys so much for watching being a part of the community and all that good stuff. I still can't see the chat now. It's like all weird and whatever. But all right, guys, you guys have a blessed and safe night. We'll be here again Friday, 7 p.m. through however long. Is it 8 p.m. now? We're just past, just barely past 8 p.m. So I usually stay from 7 to 8, an hour. That's usually what I like to do. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for me. I'm going to go and finish doing the work I got to do. 
And uh, you guys be easy. Till the next stream, I'll see you guys later. And let's turn it off.